Okay guys, welcome back. So final leg of this tutorial is going to show you how to add a border. Now if you're uncomfortable with changing colors, you can do this border in exactly the same yarn that you have already attached. And I'll just show you what we're going to do. So to do the border, you're going to finish off the row like you did before with that chain stitch. Sorry guys. Let me go over that loop again. Okay, so we're just gonna do that chain. Except when you turn this time, instead of going back across where you've been going, we're gonna do a 90 degree turn. So you're working down the side instead of the top and the bottom. Now these stitches aren't exactly stitches, they're just gaps that we're gonna work these stitches into. So we're gonna do it with a different color so that you can see more of defined of where we're going, which is why I'm choosing to do it in a, a contrasting color. So you'll see every spot that those stitches are. But if you choose to do it in the same color, that's fine, totally your preference. But because I'm doing it in a separate color, I'm going to have to fasten off. So just like when you finish any project, what we have here is a single crochet in that final stitch. That's where we left off. Our final stitch was that single crochet there. So we're going to finish off by going back in that same final stitch, pulling up a loop. You're going to pull it through that other loop. And that is called a slip stitch. And what that does, pulls it nice and tight. Now, as I told you guys in my last video, I kind of like to do an extra step. So we're going to cut the yarn loose. Well, I could show you. Let's not do that. Let's teach you a new technique and changing colors without fastening off this time. It'll give us a better finish. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab your border color. And for me, it's going to be this plain purple. This plain purple color here. And we're at the very beginning of our slip stitch. So we're still going to do the chain one because we're going to turn, but Instead of finishing that stitch, we're going to take this back to where it was just the two loops. And that's where we pulled up a loop. We're down to two loops on our hook. Instead of grabbing the working yarn, this is where we're going to change. We're going to grab that contrasting color. No knots, no nothing. We're just going to loop it around leaving a tail. Let me back out just a little. There we go. Leaving a tail. You want to leave about a six inch tail for secure purposes. So now we're going to take that new yarn. And you have those two loops on your hook. I'm just going to pull that new yarn through. Now you're going to have a tail of your old yarn that you see if you pull on it. Pull all these tight. You pull on that, it's going to kind of lock that into place. I like to go one step further just to make sure. So let's grab a hold of the new working yarn, which is going to be the color we're using for the edging, which again is this purple color. We're going to grab the tail from the new working yarn, and we're going to cut loose the tail about the same length of the old working yarn can get rid of this. And just to show you, this was a full skein when I started. And there's a little bit left, but it wouldn't be enough to do another washcloth. Um, it's 2.1 ounces. So not a full skein, but not enough for two. Okay, so let's set this aside. So now we have our working yarn and these two tails. So what I like to do to make sure that everything's secure is to take the existing working yarn. I'm going to do this with two hands so you can see. Let me 
I'm going to grab a hold of those two tails and pull them over top of that working yarn. Let me tilt this up so you can see. So they're kind of on top. So it looks like a whole bunch of extra loops on there. Looks like a mess, but it works. Now I'm going to yarn over and pull through. So that was a chain. Now I'm going to grab a hold of the purple one and pull it tight. And that's going to create a little knot. And that knot is going to have both colors underneath of it. Kind of secures it. Okay, so now we're going to do the chain one like we would if we were turning. And now we're working down the side. We're going to start and just do a single crochet in that first stitch. Now because this is the first stitch and it is also a corner, we are going to put an additional two stitches in this corner. But we're not going to do them all now. So what I like to do is I'm just going to put the second one in that same stitch so now there's two legs that go in that stitch. So there's two stitches. Okay. Let's zoom in. We're going to work over these tails as we go, and that'll save us some weaving at the end. So if you look at the side of your work, you'll see these gaps here. And they seem to be evenly spaced. And that's because one of them is the final stitch from a row and one is the chain one on the turning row. So they're about similar distance apart because we did the same stitch and the same chain up on the beginning and end of every row. Works out nicely if you do that. So in order to do this border, we're just going to go into each one of those gaps and do a single crochet. Next gap, and again, these aren't stitches, they're just spaces. Next one, next one, next one. Now, as you can see, not really showing you, so let me show you that now, since you see where we're going in the gaps. The tails from my yarn that I cut loose, these little guys right here, I'm just holding them right on top. Make sure you can see that. So these are the tails. This is the side of my work. Just kind of laying them right on top. And then when I go through the gap, see how my yarn lays on top of it? And then when we pull this through, make this loop a little bit bigger. Pull on this tail so you can see that move, maybe. You'll see that our tail is right there, underneath those stitches. And it's hidden underneath by the Vs in the back and the V in the front, which keeps them secure. And I like to take my ends at least six inches in. If it has to be less than that, I understand, but six inches for something that you're gonna use, like a washcloth, or a blanket or a granny square. Your granny squares, you can't get six inches in the beginning, but the more security you leave underneath of each row, the better it's gonna hold up. Okay, so let's just continue down this row, doing just the single crochets all the way to the end of each gap that you come to. So here's a gap. See, that kind of looks like a square there. That's where we want to go, all the way to the other end. Pull some yarn out. Okay. We're coming up to the end of our tails, so we won't have to hold those in place anymore.
Okay, so now that the tails are nice and short, it can get a little hard to go over top of them. So what I do is I pull a little bit, and you can see when I pull that, kind of shrunk this up. That's okay, because we can always pull it back loose. Just gives you a little bit more to work with to make sure that you can get over top of those tails. Okay. So two more stitches, and this will be the last stitch over the tail. So you want to hold them there as best as you can and kind of let that yarn do the work. And then, just like that, we stretch that back out. And you see, we're getting that border. And you can see those gaps. And with the contrasting color, you can see them much better. So we're going to continue to do the border. Let me just show you guys. Mine's a little bit longer than nine. My rows must have got stretched just a little bit. But that'll be okay. It'll just be a little larger. So we're going to go down to the corner, which is the very end stitch down here. Just doing single crochets in each gap we come close to, come up to, I should say. Next gap, okay. So now we are at the point where our foundation chain is. Now this is the very first row we worked into. And now we have to work on the opposite side of that foundation chain. So when we did the initial foundation chain, we worked into the top V, which is underneath this little V here. But there's this one little loop that's down here. And that's the loop we're going to use. So let me stay zoomed in as close as I can. Now, on top of it being our foundation chain that we're working into, we have this corner stitch here. So this corner stitch needs to get three singles in the same stitch. So that's one, two, three. Now the reason we do three is because that's going to cause an arc, which is going to get us around the corner. Instead of it being blunt, it would leave a gap. You need those extra stitches to give you that extra space. So it kind of fans around for you and gives you a nice rounded edge. So now we're going to work into the base of that foundation chain. So instead of having two loops, we only have the one left. So we're just going to work those single crochets into that one loop. And they can be a little tough to get into. You just got to kind of get your finger behind them and hope for the best. One little loop, pull up a loop, pull through two. And that one loose little loop, pull up a loop, pull through two. So that's what we're going to do, and it's going to seem different because you're only working in a very loose space, because that loop is going to be kind of loose feeling compared to your other stitches, because it's just the one left. So it's okay if it feels a little different. You'll find that you work on the opposite side of the chain on some patterns, especially if you're doing something that's going to be an oval. You'll need to work on either side of the foundation chain. And depending on your preference, on what you're actually making. You could leave an extra loop to work into when you work up the other side in some cases and then in other cases you can't because it would change your pattern. So as long as you're reading the pattern and you think you'll be okay you can always start by you know just using the top loop first time so you have two loops when you come back around the back so you're not fighting. So 
Sometimes it's just a matter of trial and error with certain patterns. Oh, I didn't get all four strands of that yarn that time. That is another thing you need to be careful of, especially with your cotton yarns. They have a tendency to separate because all yarn is made of several small strands of yarn that are all looped together to make one strand. That would be a separate video on different plies of yarn for sure. Because that has a very complex nature on different types of yarns. Okay, so we're almost back to the other corner. And I wanted to stay filming through this whole procedure on the border part because it is a little different. Okay. So my last single looper here, and then we're gonna do the corner one again. Okay, now we're in the corner. So this one, oops, is gonna get three. So that's one, two, three. Now, as you can see, we've come up to the original tail from the foundation chain from the very beginning. So we're gonna do the same thing and maybe get away with not using this at all. Not saying that I don't enjoy using my needle. Just saying, I do not enjoy sewing in ends. Not my favorite thing. I can get away with sewing them in, tucking them in as I go. That is my method. Okay, so we've done our three in the corner. And now we're just gonna go down through the gaps. Again, making sure we hold that tail nice and close. And we just do the singles in the gaps all the way down. So I'm gonna kind of whip through these real quick so we can get back down to this other corner so we can show you how to do the increase in the corner one more time. And then we'll zip across to the top and show you how to finish it off. And then I have a few samples left here of ones that I've done previously. Unfortunately, I only have a couple. Sold most of them. Okay. Lost my little tail guy there. Gotta make sure I don't lose him. Now you can see there, that's what I mean by four strands. See that? That's what your yarn does when you get sometimes down towards the ends and things. They start to fray on you. Makes them harder to control. But we got that one. We won't let him beat us. We are the masters of our own projects. Okay. Almost to the corner. Last gap here. Okay. Back to the corner stitch. Now, as you can see, we're on that top run again, the very last row of the last one, last row that we did, so our Vs are back. So it'll be much easier to be able to determine where those stitches are going. So we wanna make sure we catch that first V. It's right there by that knot. That's our corner. So we're gonna put three singles in there. One, two, Okay hey guys, final leg, last row. Single crochet in each one of the existing stitches, which are defined by the double Vs, or the single V, the V, the two legs on the top. It just depends on, ooh, split my yarn. It just depends. I'm just gonna zip on down. Hey Bob Barker, come on down. know some of you that are new are thinking, Phew, that girl is just going. But I promise you, once you 
get used to your stitches, used to the way the yarn flows through your fingers, depending on how you hold it. Um, some of you are probably looking at how I hold my yarn, not understanding how I hold my yarn. Um, there are several, several ways of holding it. It is pretty much all by personal preference on how you can hold it and feel comfortable with what you're doing. Okay, so last two stitches here. One. Okay, now like I said in the beginning, I only put two single crochets in this corner stitch here when we first started. And the reason for that is because if you put three, then this final stitch would meet up and you would have what I like to call a unfinished looking corner. I don't like the way it looks. So anytime I'm doing a corner, whether it's a granny square or just a turn on a blanket or a, anything, anything I'm doing a corner on, I save one or two of those stitches. If it's four single crochets to the corner, then I do two initially, and I finish off the last two at the end of the row. So I put two in there. So we're gonna go back into that very first stitch where we put two. We're gonna put that third stitch. And see how that closed that off. Made it almost invisible to go from one to the next. And just for security purposes, we're going to go into the next stitch, which is the very first stitch that we did on that corner initially. And we're going to slip stitch. So two loops. And for that slip stitch, we pull this loop through the existing loop, existing loop, pull it tight. It's going to give you a little knot. And because I like to be safe than sorry, cut your yarn loose. Grab a hold of that yarn, pull it through, kind of give it a tuck. That's going to give you a little knot. Now, unfortunately, we were unable to tuck every end. Still have one left. So in order to do that, let me zoom in here so you can see, because this is a very small needle, larger than most, but still small. You're going to fold your yarn in half. And pinch it in your fingers and wiggle your needle and then your yarn will come through just like sewing okay so now we have this on our end one end is attached to the work one end is on the needle so you're going to go to either side of your work i like to go to the back which sometimes when it's a double faced, it's kind of hard to go to the back. But see all these large V's? So I like to take my needle, kind of wiggle it up underneath those V's. Now we're gonna go underneath the second set of V's. See how that yarn needle just flows right between those stitches like so and if you look on the other side you can't see the needle and that means when I pull this through sorry guys my camera keeps auto focusing when I pull this guy through you won't see it that matters on some work doesn't necessarily matter on this one because since we went back and forth, there is no right side or wrong side. Let me just zoom in so you can see me go in between those again. Focus, please. Okay, so there's those Vs. We're just working straight underneath of them. gonna push this needle through grab a hold of your corner and pull that's gonna pull that through and now it's tucked in all the way to there I'm just gonna quickly weave this in the rest of the way I'm 
show you what I like to do. So you see, if I pull on that end, it scrunches up your work. That's okay. I do that on purpose. Do this to right here. Okay, that should be far enough. So take our needle off. See where I scrunched it up? See how it's all scrunched? And I'm going to grab a hold of this end. I'm going to grab a hold of this end. Pull. Now that's going to pull that yarn back straight in that ridge that we put it in, leaving this tiny little piece. Get as close as you can. Cut it loose. And I have this handy dandy bucket here. I keep all my odds and ends in, and I donate them to the schools for children's projects for the pre-K class. Or you can use it for a migurami stuffing. I know a lot of people that do that. Okay, so that is our finished washcloth. Now let's see how close we are. As I told you, I do not know exactly how many rows everything is. I just go by measurements. Tug him a little bit, get him laying nice and flat. He's got a couple ridges. Just don't tug on him too hard. Ooh. Get that stuff out of the way. Okay, that's the centimeter side. So we're at about nine and a half. By nine. Oh, sorry guys. So very close to my standard normal size, but that is how to make a washcloth out of 100% cotton yarn. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment and I'll answer any questions you have. If there's any tutorials that you would like to see or stitches that you would like to see, um, you can leave that in the comment box and I will gladly do my best to get those videos up for you. Um, thank you so much for watching and I hope your washcloth turned out perfect. Have a great day.